stories about Maurice that you'd like to share, give us a call after this next track. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. Well, this is gonna be a long night. Oh, really? I feel like it's going pretty quickly to me. I could ask you some questions to speed things along. You're gonna interview me. Are you sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together like a week now, and you're still all shrouded in mystery. All right. Shoot, what do you want to know? Question one. Tell me about your family. What? Come on, Peggy, that's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope. Now that's too specific. Too specific? I... Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. It's okay, Peggy. That's how it goes. Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. Oh. Yeah. My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck. That was dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget dad so bad. She even made me take my stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day and my mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that name. Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No, not anymore. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. Really? And someone needs our help? Maybe. You want to go check it out? Me? You sure you don't want to go? No way. I'm locked up tight in here. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. Okay, down to the first floor, then check the door. Locked to tight. I should grab that key Peggy slid under her door. A tape play on air. Need to keep.
who was there? I didn't see who it was. Are they still out there? No. They left as soon as I went down there. They pushed a cassette through the door. It says, play me on air. All right. Well, turn the music off and play it. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Time to sit there. I will punish you. I'll... I'm going to enjoy this. I did not enjoy that. What the hell was that? I... Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Say something. <sighs> Hello? There's no way the killer got from the newspaper to hear so quick. I know. Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. We'll remove her from the suspect list. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches battened. gonna love this next track. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. Big fan of Roddy? I love Roddy. I will always find you was my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. Oh my god, I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe he didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to K Fan, not to me. Then it's gotta be downstairs at reception. Man, I can't believe Barbara didn't say anything. I mean, well. If that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at KFAM aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Well, go get Roddy's song before Gina sees the pants off us.
This must be it. Final breath. My tiny selection grows. Did you get it? Got it. Let's get this on the air. Ah! Gallows Creek. I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. And more importantly, we should be safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. I think that's every time I've seen him live. Peggy, we just talked through the whole song. Oh, whoops. It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. Oh, shoot. I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I really hope it's nothing serious. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream, and tonight's 911 stand-in. This is Murphy! <laughs> Hello, Murphy. Uh, what have you got for us tonight? Two things, Forrest. First, happy birthday to my son, Fernando. He's free today, and man, being his daddy has changed my life. I've learned how to live. How to laugh. Most importantly, how to love. Aw, happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so-called killer. You think you're tough, huh? Big man. Huh? Ruben, come face me, a true warrior at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. Guess what? This is a bad idea, Murphy. I got all the tapes in Master Robbie's Dojo series. So get ready, whistling man. You just let loose the junkyard dog. <laughs> Oh, no. <sighs> and there he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become our hometown hero. <sighs> anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. Time to play a commercial. Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man, a devout Christian, and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Creek. Like his father and all his fathers before him, Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs, improve infrastructure, and make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. 
Unlike current mayor, Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor, and he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthews, who, after years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Teddy Gallows Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job. Teddy Gallows Jr. believes in the American dream. Does Linda Cartwright? Help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town. Help him become mayor. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. My name is Teddy Gallows Jr. And I approve this message. God, what a jackass. 100% grade A asshole. Linda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek? Ugh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, of course he's one of those guys. Yep, he played lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show. Well, folks, hearing that reminds me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. You mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. Let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote. We got a caller. You know what to do. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <sighs> Hello? Who is this? Are you okay? Do you need help? Forrest? He called me? That horrible whistling down the phone. He's coming for me? Jesus. Hey, listen, Collar, don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. Sure. Okay. Okay. We're gonna help you. Can you tell me your name, caller? I'm Dr. Sullivan of Virginia. Sorry. Take some deep breaths, Virginia. You're gonna be okay. Please don't let me die. I won't. Just calm down. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? Maybe you can hide in your house? He'll find me. I know he'll find me. Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away tonight. There's just a fraternity down the street. You live by a frat house? Yes. They're having a party. That takeout coming in all night. Lawn covered in beer cans. They're getting wasted. And I'm about to get... Oh, God. Virginia, what's the name of the frat? It's... Oh, God. I can't think. I, I can't... Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? If I knew where she was, I might know, but... Wait, the takeout. If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. I can't do this! Well, folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try to figure out what takeout to order, here's some music for your own midnight snacks. Here comes one of my favorites. Peggy, what places do takeout in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Barbecue place, grilling spree, and you can order from Chalupa Cabras. Oh, and of course we have Ponzi's Pizza. That's it, I think. All right, we'll call each place and ask who they delivered to tonight. That's not going to work. Take out client privilege. What? There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. 
but what we can do is this. We figure out where the frat boys order from, call the takeout pretending to be from the frat, place an order, and include a note asking them to call the station. <sighs> There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. Well, let's not waste any time then. That's the spirit. You got any suggestions on where to look? Check the offices for anything food related. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. You'll need a keyboard. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. God, where to start? What would make me order from somewhere if I were a partying frat boy? We have a food critic, right? Chad or Brad or... Uh... <sighs> I just have to look around. Cabra. Hmm. Promotion, huh? Maybe if I find the pizza box. Go Gallows High, I guess. Locked, for now. I'm not getting in there tonight.
rooting through trash. This is a new low. Ooh. Interesting offer.
It's not opening. Hey, find anything useful? Yes, I have. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Let's make the call. Time to turn the music off. Okay, Forrest, what'll it be? Call Ponty's Pizza. You got it. Ponty's Pizza is on the line. Ponty's Pizza! May I take your order? Fratman calling. We're in major need of foods for dudes. Uh, may I take your order? Oh man, I got a frat to feed. So give me that slow roast pizza. Oh, a fine choice. But that will take three hours. You sure? Never mind, just give me the garlic bread. Can do. Where do you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know. The frat house. Got it. And we'll have that over to you right away. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? KFAM? Oh, consider it done. The folks at K-Fam are huge fans of Ponty's Pizza, you know. I should really call them and let them know. And now we wait. We should put a song on. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. Play a record, Forrest. You'll like this next song. Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No, wh where would you actually eat? Oh, I mean, they're all pretty equal. You mean equally good? Yeah, not Ponty. He's not Ponty. Right, so between grilling spree and chalupa coffee. I mean, it depends. Do I want a plate full of meat? Or do I want really, really good nachos? It can change depending on the day, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Maybe I... Hold that thought, Forrest. We've got a call coming in. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream, and... Is this Goose? <laughs> oh, man. It's totally you, isn't it, Goose? <laughs> this is such a Goose prank. Plunker, this is an emergency. I... Nice try, Goose. I may be drunk, but I'm no... Uh, listen, I need you to... Goose, come get beer. Your brothers are waiting for you. I'm not Goose. I. Uh, how can I prove this to you? Oh, let me get a second opinion on this. Norman the Barbarian. What do you think? <laughs> Great idea. Norman. 
Now the barbarian says, only the radio man can control the tune. So, play us the flow. Wait, really? What? The flow? Norman the Barbarian demands it. Okay, okay. I'll play the damn song. Listen, you've got to get over to your neighbor's house. All of you, just... Say no more. Fucker's moving the house. Forrest, line two. Hello, you're live on 189.16, The Scream. Forrest, it's the killer. He's at the door. Grace. Oh my God, it's, it's you, isn't it? God, I didn't talk, I promise. Welcome, Virginia. And thank you to Plunker and his fraternity brothers. Some heroes wear capes, some wear sheets as togas. Hey, Forrest, did you hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that all about? Clive, I didn't talk. Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but your guess is as good as mine. All right, folks. Seems we may have a lead. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have another caller. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all horrifying. A killer roaming the streets of our fair town? Ooh, terrible. <sighs> I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. It's a safe, family-friendly place. Good for you, friend. I'm glad you're keeping safe and busy. Thank you. Oh, I'm really living the American dream. <laughs> Here in my business. <clears throat> what is your business anyway? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you ask, it's Party's Pizza! The best and only pizza place in town! Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two for one. God damn it, Party, no! No free ads! <sighs> I mean, I guess we can't be that mad at him. Calling Ponty's did save Virginia. I can be mad, Peggy. That sort of thing just. Uh, I can be mad. Look, he's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Just take a deep breath and let's keep going. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream, and tonight's 911 stand in. Hi. Hello? Am I on air? Sure, our caller. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein, and I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your show, looking up at the stars and waiting. For her. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. We planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight. To take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. That's why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming, or wait and see? 
For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually. But, uh... Oh, jeez. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. Hang on! I hear some rustling. I guess she came after all. Molly! I'm in the middle! It'll take a little while to get here, but, uh... Thanks again, Forrest. It's been good talking. Wait a second. Molly can't whistle. No, no! This is supposed to be the best night of my life! Not the worst! Eugene, do you know the way out? It wouldn't be the maze maze if he could just remember the way, Forrest. She's right! I... Listen, Eugene. Breathe. Hide. And call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I... I'll do it for Molly. But please, hurry. Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. How the hell am I supposed to get him through the maze maze? You know, Barbara, our receptionist, she's a maze maze fanatic. Shame she isn't here. I was supposed to go with her last week. Why'd she change her mind? She went with that jerk Brad instead. Does everyone in Gallows Creek go on dates in the maze maze? A lot of folks do. There's something nice about getting lost, I guess. And besides, there's not much else to do here. Maybe we should call Barbara then? If she's so big on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has maze maze stuff somewhere. Go and see what you can find. That'll hopefully be enough. Uh, which one is Barbara again? Barbara, you know, Barbara. Uh... Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. Help me out, Peggy. She's the receptionist. Sits at reception, never does any work because she's talking to Brad all day. Ring any bells? Right, yeah, sorry, I guess it's just the stress of... No excuses. Just go and find something to help us. Looks like Brad broke her heart. Wonder what she'd have done with all that maze maze stuff. Bingo, here's what I was looking for. Gene, yes. For Barbara, no. Brad canceled the date. So Barbara left her tickets and a map for the maze maze behind. Ugh, Barbara can do better than... Never mind. Let's save the kid. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our lover in the maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. I'm lost, Forrest. I just ran and I, I don't know where I am. I'm at a crossroad facing a tractor statue. There are hay bales painted gold on my right.
Go forward. Okay. Here I go. This, uh, uh doesn't look right. Uh, no, no, I I'm going back to where I was. Jesus! Oh, shit! He's cutting through the walls! Where do I go? Go backwards! Okay! I'm going! I guess that's what love does. It makes us fall to pieces. I just... don't, Forrest, okay? Don't. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. And thank you for calling in Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Thank you. That's really wonderful of you to say. What's your name, Collar? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. We got it. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're gonna find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but, uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, I... Uh, I threw it out the window earlier today. Uh, and why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. All right. So, uh, what do we do instead then? Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks. Here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. the songs to request. Why'd it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote that song for one. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <sighs> Why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nat. Forrest? Oh, thank God. It's me again. Murphy. Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Oh, the killer got me, man. I... Uh... Why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? I warned you not to. Hindsight is 2020, okay? Forrest, we need to do something. Goddamn piece of shit. You came to the gallows waste disposal plant. Feed on me, man. Carry me inside. 
out and lock me in a dumpster. I got a flashlight. But... Oh, oh, goddamn! I smell smoke. I think he started a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now, or I'm gonna die. Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Now just come on, pick up. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? He... Oh, God damn it! Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. They can't do anything. But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's... old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this.
All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Call Jericho. All right, give me a second. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. Forrest, I'm getting a call. Are you sure you can't? What's happening, Peggy? Uh, old man Jericho wasn't fast enough. I don't know why I even mentioned him, but I did. The plant burned down. It collapsed. So Murphy is... <sighs> Poor Fernando is gonna be crushed. His father died a hero. He was just trying to protect the town. That's actually pretty nice, Forrest. Murphy, I promise we will stop this. For you, and for Fernando. Peggy, it's going to be our... Forrest, we have another caller. Let's not waste time. All right, folks. Another of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors during this awful time. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know. You're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up to bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Jackass. Teddy, this isn't the time for your political ads. Stop. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, which employs over 200... Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem. A problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? I didn't ask about a problem. I said emergency. The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. Oh, here we go. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, unstable, and- You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it- Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. The moral decay of- and that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us? I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. Ah! <laughs> 
Do you seek ancient wisdom? Do you want to double your power? Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior for only $24.99? Then step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo of Kung Rate and receive direct by video warrior instruction from me, Master Robbie. You will learn the four qualities of an ultimate conqueror. The power of the alligator. The discipline of the tarantula. The speed of the tuna. The poise of the scorpion. And the wisdom of the bullfrog. Using classified techniques, I'll unlock your inner chi after only five 30-minute video sessions. Ultimate power and wisdom can be yours now for the low, low price of only $24.99. Just call 555-7861-USA to take your first step to becoming a champion. Never forget the element of surprise! If you buy today, you'll receive two additional VHS tapes, the Tornado Technique, and Karate Love Me. Call today! Jesus, you know, after what happened with Murphy, I think... Yeah, we should take that out of rotation. <sighs> kind of a shame, though. It is pretty fun. Yeah, I bet karate lovemaking sure is something. Uh, I, uh... <laughs> is Forrest Nash at a loss for words? Hey, let's just get to the show. Apologies, folks. We must have left that tape in rotation by accident. I think it's fair to say that's one deal you can skip. But what you can't skip is what our next caller has to say. Caller on line one. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Uh, hello, caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I... <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I. I think he's killed some of them already. That's him. He's just outside. I can see him from up here. God damn it. She's just a kid. Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god. Oh my god. You stay with me, kid. Focus. I can't do this! Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me, what's your name? Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? Upstairs. I'm at the end of a hall. There's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? Go to the closet. Okay, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? It's just a joke, jeez. Wait, isn't that... Jimmy, that wasn't funny, you sicko! Of course I called the cops, but, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? 
Forrest Nash. What the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. <sighs> Jimmy, this is a pretty sick thing to do. What? It's whistling night. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Hmm? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... Uh... Wait. Oh, no. Who, uh... Who are you? Oh, no, man! Not time, but not much. Forrest, we have to... Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house, and... Oh, of course! The van! Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. I'm sorry about Jimmy. Thank you. This is crazy, Forrest. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's got to be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're gonna get killed. If only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in. Forrest, listen. Uh, we'll see what we can come up with, and, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good at... Uh, and... No, no, Chad. Out of all of us, you're not the one to... Everything okay? No. We, uh, uh, We're figuring out a plan. But everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker, or else these idiots are going to get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Ugh. Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. Ugh. These damn kids never learn. Are you okay? Ugh. They do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right. <clears throat> Folks, we're going to work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. <laughs> You're going to love this next track. Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs. I heard. All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully, she has something we can use. Peggy said her desk is downstairs. Jeez, they really tucked Jeannie away.
friendship quiz. This might work. Find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one, whenever you're ready. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? We'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather. He picked you. Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two. The whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Jennifer. Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Anyway, that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. That is part four. This is a very detailed plan. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four, we need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between... Who was it again? Ah, uh, David, Cynthia, and Scott. Hot David. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you spend a lot of time running shirtless. You got this, Hot David. Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof. A runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. The getaway. Ooh, what's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. Part five, we trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable lead? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Lisa. Cynthia. I know we all love watching American Skid. Yes, I... Yeah. Just...
just do what they did in the movie. Uh. Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and then it's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. I hope you're right. Yeah, let's hope. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Alrighty then. Hit it. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Smarter. To the roof. Go, Heather. She's off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter's signal. Spotter says go! Keys, Carrie, you need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. We got God. Oh, God. Focus. Breathe. Focus, you got this. We got this. Next step, trap the killer. All right, wait. Get into position. Everybody else, hide. Okay, performer. Now, act like your life depends on it. What was that? It's a whistling man. Drive! Now! You're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. If you 
hadn't I? It was your plan, Carrie, and it was a great plan. You get home now, Carrie, before he changes his mind. Right. I, I need to get home. I... Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Folks, that was a... That was a lot. Our thoughts go out to the parents whose kids won't make it home tonight. For any kids listening in, Please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song for the girl walking home in the dark. Hey, we had a call come in. Forrest Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest. I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway. Tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink, trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky, and I now consider you a friend, my man. We're friends now, huh? Well... That's kind of you to say. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always Roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by Just Ricky. Yeah. Back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time turn to the bottle. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems. Sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Aw, oh, hello, Max. Oh, welcome to the show, Max. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate? Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. <laughs> Sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating's got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a little. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. Oh, you got it, man. Peace.
Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, th that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. I made it home safe. Gary! Hey, I, I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though not everybody made it, and uh, I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't... Why am I... Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did... Why let me go? Maybe he only wanted to hurt the pranksters. I... Maybe. Did he just think everyone was making fun of him? Did he always hate these hazing rituals? I... I mean, if he did, why wait all these years to... Why do this now? These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, Forrest? Uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And... Thank you. This next one goes out to Carrie. You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their process. Well, it's something to consider. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. 